سبحان الله This is peak, man. Ah, this is a peak, you know, man. That was a madness, bro. I haven't read the email like this in a very long time. Assalamu alaikum guys, inshallah for the next hour or two I'm going to be responding to my DMs I know that you guys ask a lot of questions and I'm not always able to respond but for the next hour or two I'll be responding either by a DM back or a voice note back or if the situation is one where it requires a bit more explanation then I'll be willing to at this point in time uh, jump on a phone call if it need be inshallah ta'ala but this is not for anything past the next one or two hours okay and one of the reasons I'm also going to be doing this inshallah ta'ala is because I know a lot of people they ask me questions in my DMs that other people might have answers to and obviously you can't see the answer that I give to the person privately so inshallah ta'ala we have the um, cameraman brother Kamran here inshallah ta'ala he's going to be recording me over the next one two hours responding to these questions of course those of you who are asking the questions are going to be kept absolutely anonymous he's not going to get you or anything that you say uh, it's just going to be my answers just my answers um, and I will mention the question that you guys are asking Just for those who don't get to see the question being answered Who might also have that question Can actually get the answer Does that make sense? But it's only for the next hour or two Barakallah fiqh Salaamu alaykum Peace Okay, we've got some DMs coming through, man um, The mic's on, yeah So a lot of them are two minutes It's just long to answer Okay, one second. Let me, let, me, let me just pull a few out. There was a few good ones. Um, I don't wear hijab, but I pray five times a day and also read the Quran and do the night prayer. Is it a sin not to wear the hijab and will I be punished for that? It's interesting, Allah, because you don't usually associate someone who's not a hijabi as someone who's not just praying five times a day. <laughs> She's praying the hajjud. <laughs> I mean, you won't necessarily associate even that with a hijabi, right? Because the hajjud prayers after. But um, uh, let me answer the question. Assalamu alaikum. May Allah honor you for, for exerting yourself in the worship of Allah. But it's important to know that the salah is a separate act of worship and wearing the hijab is another act of worship so praying the salah will not suffice you from wearing the hijab i hope that makes sense I ask Allah to give you the strength to wear the hijab correctly and I ask Allah to give you the highest ranks in paradise due to the worship you are already doing. Ameen. Lovely javli. Look at this. Assalamu alaikum brother, I wanted to ask what was the specific reason for prayer not being allowed from dawn to sunrise and from asr till maghrib? Wa alaikum assalam. Because that is the time when the sun worshippers worship the sun. And we are not allowed to imitate The kuffar, we're not allowed to imitate the kuffar. Look how powerful that is. The salah, which is the greatest act of worship after the shahada, we are not allowed to do it from fajr.
till sunrise and from the time when the sun set, uh, after Asr to Maghrib because that's the time those who worship the sun, they worship. So a great act of worship was told, no, you're not allowed to do it. Why? Because at the time you do that worship, even though you're worshipping Allah, you resemble the ones who are worshipping another God besides Allah. So if you're not allowed to do acts of worship because they might resemble the disbelievers, what about dressing like them, acting like them, behaving like them? What about wearing? What about wearing Nike? Which is a Greek God. Worship besides Allah. And um, of course, the way that I, if I receive messages or if I send messages on Instagram, it's never me inappropriately or ever. And inappropriately would be not necessarily saying anything inappropriate, but direct, like messaging a sister without a third party would be inappropriate. So on my Instagram, nothing like that happens. I've got a minimum of four admins. My wife is one of them. Abu Bakr is another. Taha is another. And, um, you know, some of the other brothers. Same with my email, my YouTube channel. Like, I, um, so our situation is a bit different. I'm going to respond to one of the questions right here on my story, inshallah. A sister basically saying that she got a proposal for marriage, so obviously she went to do istikhara. Now, she's saying that her dad also then basically went to one of the local imams or something and told the imam to do istikhara. And apparently the imam said that the istikhara came out bad. And apparently her dad goes to this imam whenever there's big decisions and they need istikhara to be done. So, from my experience, because I do ruqya, you know, Rukhya is that thing when people, you know, are possessed and there's magic and all that. And, you know, you, you recite Quran upon them. And Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who gives cure. None of us, Allah gives cure. Because in my experience, I've done Rukhya. I found that when there's situations when people are saying, hey, can you go and ask this Shaykh to do istikhara? Usually that Shaykh is doing magic. And he's a magician. And he's not actually doing istikhara. Because what istikhara is, and I'm not saying the Shaykh is necessarily a magician. I'm not saying that because I can't make that claim. But just the thing that comes to my mind is that usually it's magic because istikhara is when you pray two raka'ah to Allah Azza wa Jal and you make a dua in it which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi taught you to make which is where you're asking Allah for counsel saying Allah if this is good for me what I'm asking you for then bring it close to me and make me close to it and if it's bad for me fasrifu anni wa sarifni anhu make it far from me and make me far from it so that's istikhara and the way that istikhara works is that if it's good for you it will happen you won't see no dream there won't be no oh my god lightning from the sky and poof you know thunder and no no it will literally just happen for you. it will be easy for you and if it's bad you can try everything you want for it to happen it will never happen for you does that make sense but this concept of getting someone else to do istikhara for you and then what they do is it's not even istikhara they don't pray I don't know what it is. I think from what I've gathered, sometimes they make dua to the shayateen, to the devils, and they ask the devils to see into the future. And you know, they, 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 they do some fortune telling like that. And then they say that they had a dream and you know, someone told them, someone informed them. And a lot of the time it's just shayateen. It's just evil jinn that they're working with. And um, yeah, istikhara doesn't happen like that. It happens according to you. And also the sister said that my istikhara is coming out good. I don't know what she means by that. Because some people think istikhara come out good mean you have a dream. It's got nothing to do with dreams. It's about if, it, if, it's, if Allah wants it to happen for you, it will just happen. Even if the whole world tries to stop it. And if it's not good for you, it won't happen. Even if everyone tries to make you do it. Hope that answers your question. Istikhara, peace. This is peak, man. Ah, this is a peak email, man. That was a madness, bro. I haven't read the email like this in a very long time. Yeah, I received an email today. Anyway, the sister she mentioned, she's 21 years old, sister. She, you know, she watches my videos every night. She's saying she's even on the knowledge college. But she mentioned that she's done zina countless times. She slept with many men. She said she even fell pregnant and then she was forced to take an abortion. So that's murder upon fornication. She said, I still committed the deed quite a few times after that. And this is the part. She said with different boys. She said, I asked for a lot of forgiveness during Ramadan. But while I was making Toba, I was still planning my next visit with other guys. Deep down, she said, I know it's wrong. Uh, even though she watched my videos about Zina and Hellfire, she's like, on my way to see this particular guy. She said, asked for forgiveness. I knew it was wrong, was scared, but she said she still slept with him. She still um, done the haram with him. So, 
sister goes on to basically mention that you know the things that spark this in her is social media she's like obviously when she finishes with a guy she keeps him moving she can block the guy but she can't leave to see him or leave off instagram and facebook and whatsapp she said i know these things trigger my iman and spark dirty thoughts in my mind uh, when i see pictures of guys i've been with and sometimes get messages from guys uh, i've been with she said it's easy for me to block and delete these boys numbers and that's i can block and delete them but it's hard for me to delete instagram and facebook and she's saying she's trying so much to make toba she says she's so scared of death she but she just doesn't feel it in her heart she said she fasted the day of arafah ramadan she's saying she wakes up for tahajjud she's really trying to make toba but she's saying she doesn't feel it in her heart <coughs> so to answer the sister's question so I will say to the sister first and foremost, sister, you've identified the very problem that's stopping you from actually feeling that, you know, softness in terms of your heart and the thing that keeps pulling you back towards a sin. You said it's Facebook, you said it's social media, you actually wrote it down, you said, I know these things trigger dirty thoughts in my mind. And you said you can delete the boys' numbers, but when they message you on these social media platforms, that's when they get to you. Sister, the answer to your problem is right there and then. It's right there. You have to, by any means necessary, jump off these social medias you have to get rid of your whatsapp you have to get rid of your phone look allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't tell us don't do zina no he didn't rather of course he told us not to do zina he told us don't go near to it why because there are triggers that lead to zina and what is the primary trigger that leads to zina it's what you look at that's why Allah Azza wa Jalla said in Surah to nur to lower your gaze and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said protect your private parts. Meaning the protection of the private parts cannot come if you have not protected your gaze. Like if your eyes are everywhere and they're looking around in places where they shouldn't be then what will happen as a result of that is that you will fall into the sin with your private parts because there's a direct connection between what you look at and what goes into your heart. And what goes into your heart comes and reflects into the body. The filthy things are going into your heart, the body will act in a filthy and a corrupted way. So sister, that is the answer. Like that is the answer to your question. You have to absolutely get off social media. You have to, sister, like this is big. You have to get off social media. You have to get rid of your phone. You have to get rid, get a new number because as long as you have these triggers that are around you, you will not be able to leave the sin. It will be very hard for you to leave this, leave the sin. And why is it that you don't feel it in your heart when you repent and you still feel like your heart is not soft and it's heavy and it's uh, you, you feel like it's dark? Sister, the answer to that is because every time you do a sin, the heart becomes dark. The Prophet ﷺ said that Allah places a black dot on your heart. And then when you do another sin, another black dot another black dot until the whole heart is covered with darkness and you cannot tell the difference between good and bad anymore sister your heart is getting really dark you have to understand this is getting really dark right now we can see that you really you know in your email it, you said you're scared of death you're saying you're praying to hadrick you're trying you really feel the guilt for the sin you mentioned you feel guilt you you hate the sin you really want to leave the sin my sister a time is going to come where you eventually you're not even you're, you're going to love the sin you're not going to hate it anymore you're not you're, even that guilt that you have my sister you're not going to feel it anymore it's really dangerous the fact that you're saying that you repent but you can't cry when you've done this sin it's shown because your heart is getting really tainted my sister but if you do not give up now and you don't quit while you're ahead sister the whole heart is going to become tainted and destroyed and corrupted and what happens at that stage Allah said that Allah will seal your heart